Welcome to the RemoteHamRadio.com WebDX tutorial. I'm Lee, WW2DX, and we're going to do a demo or tutorial about how to use the new uh, WebDX technology and service. So here I am, we're on a Mac PC, Mac uh, computer doesn't make a difference if you're on a Mac or a PC. What is important as we use the Chrome web browser okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Chrome and also a decent internet connection half a meg or better is typically what you need most people have that okay so let's fire up Chrome okay and we're going to go to www.remotehamradio.com and we're gonna log in. So you come to the website. It's probably gonna look a little different, perhaps, uh, when you see this video. Uh, we're gonna be pushing some uh, new web website code. Uh, but anyway, you'll have a member login page. You click that, typically in the right-hand corner of the screen, and you're going to log in with the uh, credentials that we sent you. So I'm gonna log in as NN2DX. I'm also gonna full screen the Chrome window. Uh, we do not want to save any passwords. Okay, so we are now logged into the WebDX console. <clears throat> and I'm going to go over all this information for you so you know exactly what's going on. So let's start at the top. Remote Ham Radio Universal Console. Okay, uh, we show your call sign, you're logged in, some links here. Uh, we have the solar data here, your A, K, SFI, and Sunspot numbers, which are really awesome right now, and a uh, Zulu UTC clock. Below that are the stations on the console. So here we have W2 Quaker. It's in a blue box, which means it's selected. This is the console that we're currently looking at, and all you have to do is click one of these and select that, and boom, you, you are presented with the console of that particular station. Okay, that station is being built. So here we are, W2 Wyndham. We're looking at it. <clears throat> click on W2 Quaker, we're looking at it. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and actually connect to a station and then we'll go over all the pieces of this. First thing we're going to do is, well, actually we can test our audio. So we have a cool little troubleshooting audio tool here at the, down below the power button for the radio. We're going to click this button and audio troubleshooting. Browser support, okay, our browser is right. Test a microphone, say access. Now, when I click the access microphone, you're going to see this pull down here happen uh, in Chrome. And this is also going to happen the first time that you connect to a station or the first time you log in. It's very important to remember this. So you always want to click allow here. Okay. Now that we have the microphone access, the other thing we want to check is that the right microphone is selected. And the way we can do that is by clicking this little microphone uh, camera icon. And you click the little camera icon, and here you can select your microphone. And in this case, I'm going to select the headset that I'm using. Okay. Then to test, we simply click and hold uh, this little button, PTT, if you will, and talk. Testing one, two, three. This is Whiskey, Whiskey two, Delta X-ray, WW two DX testing. Testing one, two, three. This is Whiskey, Whiskey two, Delta X-ray, WW two DX testing. Perfect. Sounded great. Our audio seems to be set up properly. We hit close. We're here. We're going to power on the radio. Again, we get the little drop down. This is very important that you don't miss this. We click allow. The radio will power on. We will get a, if there's any information uh, about the station that you need to know about, in this case we have some, a lot of snow here in the northeast right now, so we have some issues with the 80 meter four square. But anything else is, you'll get a pop up uh, that's very important and you should read these. Okay, we hit close. Now we are connected to the station, connected to the W2 Quaker. I'm going to turn the audio down here so you can hear me. Okay, so we are connected. It says here, in use by NN2DX, me. Uh, anybody else on the system will not see the call sign. It'll just say, in use. <clears throat> okay, so maybe if somebody else connects to Wyndham while we're doing this demo, I'll show you exactly what somebody else would see when you're connected. But in this case, you'll always see your call sign, knowing that you are connected to the particular site, but anyone else is just going to see in use. Our, our console is private and anonymous. Okay? So... Uh, we are connected. We are using. We we call uh, this the the console. We have quadrants. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger here. Okay, there we go. 
So we have quadrants. We have this square here in the top left corner, which we is the map. And this is your rotor and antenna control, direction control of your antennas. So here we are, we're on 40 meters. The antenna description will always be here, okay? So we're using a Cushcraft 42 CD to element Yagi at 85 feet, okay? And we are looking at 50 degrees azimuth, we're on 40 meters, and if we put our mouse in this go anywhere box, you get this little pop as heading, call sign, prefix, grid, so anything you t pretty much type in this box, <clears throat> the system will figure out where to point it. So, uh, for instance, um, we type in a number, 335 for azimuth, okay, and you watch the screen and there's real time uh, feedback from the rotor. So we're spinning that Yagi, that two element 40, towards Japan. Okay, and you can see we have our gray line in the map, that's real time, so as you watch you'll see the gray line actually moving across the map. You can even zoom in and zoom out, <clears throat> and it's a Google map, so you can go to satellite view, anything you like, it's all here. Okay, um, so that's typing in an azimuth, if we type in a call sign, O-N-4-U-N, hit enter, it drops a pin on the map where he's located and spins the Yagi automatically to that station. Okay, we can see our real-time azimuth readings here. <coughs> we have a stop button, which means if you start the rotator and it seems to be going in the wrong direction, you can cl simply click stop, it'll stop the rotator. And LP is long path, so it'll calculate 180 degrees from your current heading and spin the Yagi for you automatically. Okay, so it's convenient for checking long path, short path propagation. You'll just sit there and calculate the 180. So we do that for you. Below the map, we have some presets. Europe, Africa, South America, Pacific J. And these are useful, especially if you're operating a station on the other side of the country, <coughs> other side of the globe. You have no idea where things are, right? So we try to put some presets in for you so you could quickly get to those parts of the world uh, without trying to tr figure out certain things. You can quickly get there. Okay, we'll get you in the right direction, the ballpark, if you will. <coughs> um, to the right-hand side, we have the station status quadrant. And in this, this box will always tell you information about the current station that you're connected. It tells you what the current rate is per minute. tells you who's connected, be you or if it's in use. And then we break it down by where it's located, their grid square, height above sea level, <clears throat> the ARRL section if you're playing in sweepstakes or whatever contest, uh, the county, if somebody asks you if there's a county hunter, you can tell what county the transmitter is in, uh, the ITU zone, and the CQ zone. Um, we also have a weather app over here to the right, which is weather for that current location, okay, both in Fahrenheit and uh, Celsius, winds, and then we have a cool um, sunrise and sunset times for that location. We also have uh, any, any information about the station that must be known. We have no warp bands currently. They actually do exist. We're just wiring them up. But you'll, you'll periodically get information in this box, um, whatever it may be. You know, maybe we have a particular problem with one antenna, or we're working on something, or whatever the case may be. That's where you'll, you'll see that. So anytime you connect, always make sure you check the station status box and make sure you understand what's going on at that particular station. Below that, we have uh, a config RRC and a little gear. This is these two buttons are used if you choose to use a K3 or K30 to connect to our WebDX sites. Uh, not only can you connect to our sites using this WebDX technology, but you can also, if you want the real authentic radio experience, you can purchase the gear yourself from Elecraft and set it up and connect to our sites. Um, uh, with a real radio. So you get you get the best of both worlds, if you will, which is really nice. So in this, these buttons are used if you happen to connect with that, and we'll have another tutorial uh, explaining that as, as that stuff uh, becomes more available. This button here, this restart console, um, there may be times extremely rare that you may connect to a site and you may see the amplifier here which says operate it may say na not avail available or you may see the azimuth reading here on the rotor say na not available that means that the serial device was dropped whatever for whatever reason and so basically if you see that you can simply just click the restart console button it'll explain to you you know sometimes things drop 
and you can restart it, which basically restarts our server at the site and refreshes all the cons all the serial connections and brings the uh, device back. It should you it should be extremely rare. If you use that button once a year, it's a lot. Okay. And the reason we place this functionality here is in case it's the middle of the night um, and, uh, you know, something happens, you could refresh it. You don't have to wait for an admin or something like that. You can simply just refresh, get back on the radio, and keep operating. Ah, as we can see, the Windom site went red, so somebody just connected to Windom. So if we click the Windom site and take a look and see what's going on, we can see it's in use. We have no idea who's operating there. Um, it just says in use. We don't know what frequency they're on. The only thing we do know is that they're on 10 meters and the Yagi is pointing towards Europe. There's no other information that we can gain from that user. So that user, whoever that is, um, sees the exact same information when they look at Quaker right now. So even though I come over here to the station I'm connected to, I'm in use by me, um, you, that's, that's your feedback to know that you're connected to that particular station. But again, nobody else will know that you're connected here. They just see that in use. Okay. Moving on. Uh, the amplifier section. Uh, we use a number of different amplifiers, but uh, the description will be here. And this is the amplifier quadrant. Okay. And this is where we'll see our real-time output in SWR as we transmit, which I'll show you in a second. We can control the amplifier. We can say operate, put it into standby. It's in standby now. We can put it into half power and full power. And then we can put the amplifier back in the line. So if I, for instance, if I transmit right now, I'll just do a quick transmit. One, two, three, four, five, test, WW2DX testing. So we can see real-time power and SWR all in real-time, all in the browser, no software, no download, no nonsense. So, let's scroll down a little bit here. We're looking at the amp. Now we're looking at the K3 control quadrant. This is where you're going to spend most of your time operating the WebDX technology, right? Because here's our controls. We have the v main VFO knob here, uh, right here. So if I click this and drag, we're changing the VFO uh, frequency on the radio. Very simple. This one here is a sub-VFO. We're changing the sub-VFO frequency. Useful for running split, which obviously we're actually in split right now. So then we see the frequency. We see uh, you could pull this down and change bands. Okay, 160, 80, 40. Or we can click the frequency itself and type a frequency into this box. Hit enter, and we just go there. Very simple. Direct frequency entry, right? 7.135. Very simple. Okay, so we have our modes. You can pull your modes down, and this here is your tuning speed of your VFO knob. I'm in medium right now. You can go slow, fast, and medium. So it's like coarse and fine, uh, you know, so you grab this. It's, it's coarse and fine, basically. Okay. Okay. Over to the right, we have A equals B. If we want to set the two VFOs the same, and A B, which is swap, right? So if I click this button here, we're going to swap the VFOs. Now we're down in the CW portion. Bring it back. We're back into the phone portion. Split, obviously, is split. Okay. Uh, we have our real time S meter. This is a, a direct uh, duplicate of the S meter in the K3. Below that, we have our PTT button, we have our preamp, attenuators, Vox, typically only used for CW. We might enable it for phone. Um, and then we have a cool little more button here. If you click that, you get a little drop down menu. And this is where you can set some more functions of the K3 your mic compression, the power, drive power of the K3, your words per minute in CW, and your bandwidth, receive bandwidth, your filter bandwidth. So I could click narrow. Okay click and drag okay very simple now um, if you look here at the power I'm going to show you something here you can see 10 watts I'm going to try to adjust this to something higher 60 watts well look what happened it gets knocked back down to 10 watts boom 10 watts 10 watts the reason for that is the amplifier is enabled and we don't want you to worry about overdriving the amplifier and damaging the equi equipment. So, if you want to run the exciter at, at 100 watts, you simply just click the operate button to standby, the amplifier into standby, 
now the amp is in standby, now you can crank the exciter power of the K3 up to 100 watts and operate barefoot if you like. Very simple. If you put the amplifier back into operate mode, you will see the power get knocked back down to 10 watts automatically. So we, we take a lo care of a lot of things under the covers for you so you don't have to worry about uh, any of this stuff. You simply just get on and operate. And I'm going to show you some more of that uh, cool functionality here shortly. For instance, when we change bands, right? So let's go to say 10 meters. So we go down to 10 meters and you'll see the antenna change automatically. Automatically change. We put you on the right antenna. The whole thing just does the right thing for you. And so here we are on CW. Let me turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear what's going on. Let's tune around the 10 meter portion. Oops, I don't want to do that yet. So there's an Italy Zulu 5 calling CQ. Now we're going to go up to the band. I'm going to show you how we transmit here. Let me find a clear frequency. So, so in this little real-time CW box, um, oh, somebody's there. Let's keep going up. Let's go up higher. Okay, let's just see if anybody's here. QRL. Somebody's there. She's bands wide open. I'm just typing on the keyboard. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Frequency is available, so you can you can just start typing. See our real time output. Okay, so we just sent CQ, blah, 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 right? You can hit enter, it'll just clear out the box to continue typing. Now, that's one way of doing it. Um, we also have a macro, so we have these macros, macro 1, macro 2, 3, and 4, and you can set these for whatever you like, right? So we hit macros, we say edit the macros, and they're set by line. So the first macro will do WW2DX, the second macro I'll do 599TU, the third macro I'll go CQ, DX, DE, WW2DX, WW2DX, um, and maybe the fourth macro I'll say QRL or something, okay? Hit, hit, hit save and look at that. Now our macros are set. Those are the macros that we just set. So if I just click this button, it just sends it. I want to adjust my CW speed. Okay, very simple. If you're in it, this is very nice for running uh, DX pileups, right? So he says QRZ, you send your call. All right, so P5DX comes back, so it comes back, WWTX, you're 59, I just hit this. Done, logged them. Very simple, very convenient, right? Um, so that's our macros. Um, Okay, so we talked about our bandwidth. We can open up our bandwidth if we like, our speed. Uh, we have our AGC setting if you want to change that, your notch, noise blanker, and noise reduction settings are here, okay? And we can get these out of our face because typically we don't need to use these quite often. Okay, so bump this down a little bit. We've got our PTT, our preamp, attenuator, Vox settings here. Let me scroll back up the screen a little bit. We'll go to, say, 40 meters again. Let's go to... Actually, we'll go to 80. I'll show you some cool stuff on 80 meters. 3.8 megahertz. So here we are on 80. Turn this down a little bit. Now, if you see the antenna that we're using, we're using a full-size four-square on 80 meters here. And if you look in the map, we have a set of controls to control that four-square. We're currently pointing towards the northeast. We just click a direction. That's all you do is just click. And that's how you change the direction on a four square. Very simple. You can even click these presets as well. You can even do that. Um, or this. Or heading. Same sort of thing. But very easy, very simple. Let's go to 47.135. Okay, back to 40. All right. And so we can do a couple things here. If we click in this white space here so that no buttons are selected, we can use our space bar for PTT. Testing QRL. QRL is the frequency in use. Is the frequency in use, please? Okay, so I'm just using the space bar for PTT. Whiskey, whiskey, two delta X-ray testing. Very simple. Okay, that's how you PTT transmit. 
Um, let's see here. Let's check. It's getting a little late for 10. Let's go to 21,300. Let's see if there's anything going on at 15 meters. Whiskey, Whiskey 2, Delta, X-Ray. Uh, whiskey, Whiskey 2, Delta, X-Ray, 9 Alpha 2, Golf Alpha. Good morning, uh, thank you for the call. Good afternoon. You are 5 by 9, right? Strong, uh, killing Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. My name is Boris, like Bravo, Oscar, Romeo, India, Sierra. Uh, whiskey, Whiskey 2, Delta, X-Ray, 9 2 GA. Okay, uh, very good. Good morning, uh, Boris. Beautiful copy. 9 Alpha 2 Golf America. A little bit of QSB from Whiskey Whiskey 2 Delta X-Ray. Name is Lee. Lima Echo Echo. Lima Echo Echo. Running about 800, 900 watts here. And uh, two elements. I'm sorry, three elements. Three elements here on uh, on 15 meters uh, pointing your direction with an Elecraft K3. 9 Alpha 2 Golf America from Whiskey Whiskey 2 Delta X-Ray. Go ahead, Boris. Okay, whiskey, whiskey, two, delta, x-ray, nine, alpha, two, golf, alpha, returning. Okay, Lee, very good. You have very nice uh, signal. I have some problems with noise in this moment. Some uh, QR Nancy on the band. Uh, as I'm working with vertical antenna. I'm working with vertical antenna, so I have a quite, uh, quite strong uh, uh, background noise in this moment, uh, Lee. I'm running just uh, 100 watts. I'm running just 100 watts in a uh, uh, homemade monopander vertical antenna 13 meters over the ground. Lee, thank you for the calling and hope to meet you again on 15 meters or any other band or maybe tomorrow or uh, during the weekend in the contest. Uh, whiskey, whiskey, two, Delta X-ray, 9 Alpha 2, Golf Alpha, 73, bye-bye. Okay, Boris, very good. Fine business. Great job. A little bit of QSB. Uh, your signal report is um, strength um, about 5, strength 5, readability 5, so you're about a 5 and 5 here, uh, Boris. No problem whatsoever at 100 watts in the verticals, doing a great job. 73, have fun. 9 Alpha 2 Golf America, WW2DX in New York. 73, Boris. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lee. Good luck. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, 9 Alpha 2 Golf Okay, so there's a quick a quick con uh, contact with 9 Alpha 2 Golf Alpha there on 15. Just sitting here in front of my laptop in a headset. Very simple. 1,000 watts out. Um, just works. Works very nice. So, one other thing we'll go over here is I'll turn off the, uh, the radio. Hit the power button here. Powers off the radio, and we're now disconnected, and the site goes green. Very simple, okay? Below this... We have a chat, okay? So right by default, um, you have to opt in to the chat. It's a public chat, and it's only public to other users who also opt to uh, to join the public chat. And if we read here, it says other users will see your call sign and first name in the chat. You can still operate a station anonymously, which means that even though you join the chat and you're seen in the public chat window, it does not mean that once you're operating a station that your call sign is visible. At no time will anyone know you, you are operating a particular station if you're logged into the public chat or not. Okay, you always will be anonymous uh, in the, in, when you're operating a station. Okay, so I want to make that clear. There's some confusion about that. Uh, so if you simply just click join chat, you'll just see the chat window appear and you'll see who's logged in and you could just say leave chat and you're out of the chat. Okay, very simple. Um, and that's how the uh, the public chat works. And so the public chat's kind of cool. It's just certain things, you know, if you're chasing DX with friends or something like that, it's, it's useful. Um, some guys choose not to, some do, but you have the option, which is, which is very nice. Uh, there is a debug option here. This is only used for us in case you're having issues uh, connecting with the service. You'll, we'll ask you what this says if there's an error message here. It's used for us for troubleshooting uh, your connection if you have a problem. So, that is really it. It's really this simple. Um, just a quick recap. You log into uh, Remote Ham Radio with the credentials that we send you. Uh, simply just selecting these sites will show you 
uh, you know what's going on at those particular uh, consoles. Uh, once you select one of your sites, you just click the power button, powers up the radio. You get any messages that we may tell you about that station, and you're connected. Tune around, transmit, have a blast, work lots of DX, all that kind of good stuff. Have a great time. Any questions, you can always send us email at service at remotehamradio.com. We look forward to hearing about your stories and all the great DX that you worked. 73, thanks. Bye-bye.